Noah left his home after school to go meet up with some friends across town. He's seen riding his bike away from his home like he normally does, but then something strange happens. CCTV footage catches Noah riding that same bike, but now completely naked. He's found in a drainage pipe a few days later with his cause of death being accidental. We obviously need to talk about how one can conclude a little boy riding down the street naked one minute and dead the next is accidental. So let's get right into these details. If you haven't already, go ahead and go grab your cup of coffee because it's time for your true crime coffee break here on Crime Cafe with Chris and Quinn. Noah Donahue was a 14-year-old boy who lived with his mother Fiona in Belfast, Northern Ireland. He was an only child in his mother's complete world. He was intelligent and exceptional at math and science. He wanted to be involved in medicine when he got older, and he was involved in basketball and he played the cello. He actually had just started teaching himself Japanese at 14 years old. He was described as just a complete beautiful soul and his mother's soulmate. On June 21st, 2020, Noah was going to go meet up with some friends across town at a park called Cave Hill. He left at 4.45 p.m. on his bike and took the same route that he normally did. He had a book bag with him and inside his book bag he had his computer and some school books. Now, the events that come after this are completely, completely bizarre. Like, out of this world, bizarre. So just five minutes after Noah is seen on CCTV footage leaving his home. He is seen riding down Royal Avenue. It's a pretty busy street, um, but he's seen on another CCTV footage at the end of his street. He gets to the end of the street and now his book bag is missing. So something happened from when he left his house and within the first five minutes of his journey, he is now without his book bag. So then at 6.15 p.m., so 15 minutes later, um, Noah is seen driving through a crosswalk and he falls. A person, a driver, gets out of their vehicle and they want to go help him up, but Noah hurries up and, and gets up and gets on his bike and he drives off. Now, this is when it gets, like, insanely crazy. The next CCTV footage that picks him up is... A couple miles away from where he was supposedly going, he was supposed to be going to the park to see his friends. Well, now CCTV footage picks him up a couple miles away from there, and he's still riding his bike, but now he's completely naked. A witness did confirm that they saw a boy riding in that neighborhood without any clothes on. Um, they did see a boy without a shirt. They weren't aware that he didn't have pants on, but they did confirm that they saw that he didn't have any clothes on. There's no known CCTV footage between the crosswalk and the couple miles later when he's naked. So people are not able to piece together what had happened within that time. So it's three minutes later after he's seen driving naked on his bike. It's three minutes later that he's picked up on a different camera and now he's getting off of his bike and walking down like a side of the house and going towards the gated sea view park and that was the last time that noah was seen alive fiona noah's mother began to worry about him when he didn't call her at 6 30. he told her he would and he always kept his word but giving him some grace she let him go but when the clock hit 9 30 she had enough that was as long as she could let it let it go and she called the police and reported her son missing things started to happen quickly after this the police began searching for noah immediately Search and rescue teams quickly found his bike in the neighborhood where he was last seen on camera. They were also able to locate his phone, but they never found his clothes. They searched and searched for six excruciating days till they found Noah just a half a mile from where they found his bike and he was in a storm drain. The police believed that Noah willingly walked 
into this storm drain that was thought to be accidentally left open by a maintenance worker. Now to police, um, it seemed like a pretty open and shut case for them. They truly believed that Noah had fallen off his bike, got a concussion, and um, just really hit his head and he was very disoriented. And that was the cause of the bizarre behavior and what led him to his death. But we're going to go over some things that have people, especially Noah's family, thinking something else happened. So the medical examiner said his cause of death was drowning. And having been in the drain, it's said that the tide comes twice a day in those tunnels. And if Noah walked into that drain at his own free will, he would have been in there for days by the time that they found him. So he would have been submerged in water twice a day, every day, for six days. Now, the strange thing is, is that his body didn't have any water damage to it. The only damage, the water damage that they found was on his feet and his hands. That tunnel that he was in also had sewage water in it. So there was bacteria, insects, who knows what else was in there. And his body was completely intact. It was nothing got to his body when he was supposedly submerged in water twice a day every single day for six days in sewage water with who knows what else in there and the only things that are on his body is some water damage to his feet and his hands but still the police announced that there was no evidence that suggested any foul play. Like I said before, they believe that Noah suffered a head injury and had him disoriented, and that's what got him in that storm drain. See, my thing is, though, is that he clearly fell in the crosswalk, so I'm not sure if that's what the police are talking about, where um, the fall that they're referring to. Um, now... Clearly something happened within the first five minutes of Noah leaving his house and getting to the end of Royal Avenue. He didn't have his book bag anymore. So something happened along that drive, obviously. Um, and he seems fine, you know, driving away there. The only thing is, is that, I mean, he could have fallen during that time. We don't get to see from after he leaves to when the camera picks him up again and he's without a book bag. So, like, he could have fallen in between that on that street. He could have fallen on that street, maybe, lost his book bag that way and hit his head. Um, and maybe the crosswalk was a second fall. But... Hmm. And another factor that goes into that is that Noah's computer was later found with a well-known local criminal named Daryl Paul, who had a record of theft and armed robbery. And there was a woman with him named Maria Nolan, and they were actually caught trying to pawn Noah's computer. So they were charged with like, stealing, having stolen goods. Daryl said that he found the book bag on Royal Avenue like he just found it there and um he didn't know who Noah was and they were never implicated in Noah's death. The public had began to wonder if the original story of events had really happened or if there's more going on and we're going to go over some theories. So Fiona and her sister had completely poured their hearts into figuring out what happened to Noah. I 100% believe that foul play happened here and that someone is responsible for his death. They are extremely frustrated with the way the, the case was handled and they continue to just deep dive into every single detail that they can on their own. Now Fiona says that there are four witnesses that heard screaming coming from the area where Noah was last seen on the CCTV footage. She went to police with this information but they never followed up on anything. A rumor that was going around was that maybe Noah was attacked by a needle on Royal Avenue um, maybe he was attacked by a needle with drugs in it and he lost his book bag there and he slowly became disoriented as he was driving off, um, fell in the crosswalk and then, you know, um, got naked and maybe something happened to him. 
that way. Some other theories was that I was a drug-induced psychosis, an initiation ceremony of some sort that had gone wrong, and even suicide had been mentioned as well. A hearing was held to see if police were allowed to withhold some material during an inquest, and it was after the Northern Ireland Secretary signed a public interest immunity certificate, and it would allow some police material related to Noah's death and the investigation to be redacted. Now, of course, Noah's mother fought against this. So from what I gather, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland at the time referenced, quote, the continuing threat from terrorism in Northern Ireland, particularly from descendant Republicans, and the role that security and intelligence agencies play in countering this threat. And later the court clarified, quote, there's no suggestion that descendant Republicans were involved in the death of Noah Donahue, but rather that the disclosure of certain information would be valuable to them and the ilk in understanding the measures taken by those tasked with the counterterrorism activities. So I think they wanted to leave out some intelligence information, like how they were able to see certain things or get certain information. Justice Michael Humphreys, the corner of the case, ruled there was no evidence of a cover-up by the PSNI in the redaction of the reports. Fiona, of course, continues to search for answers for her son and hear something. And he... This is something that I think blows a hole in, in the, like everything here. Because two years after Noah's death, new CCTV footage was released. Um, Noah's mom didn't see it. She said it's too hard to watch anything like that. But her lawyers, they all watched it. Her team watched it. And it's Noah sneaking out of their home at 3.30 in the morning, the morning that he went missing. So he snuck out of their house at 3.30 in the morning. He was wearing a t-shirt, shorts, flip-flops, and he had headphones with him, and it was raining. And he's seen sneaking out of his house and leaving on his bike, and he comes back, and he's soaking wet, and now he doesn't have his flip-flops on anymore, and he doesn't have his headphones on anymore. I forgot to mention, he was gone for about a half hour. And it's believed that the police saw this footage and didn't say anything, because they asked Fiona when they were still searching for Noah. They asked her if he would ever sneak out, if he was able to sneak out. And she said no, she wouldn't think so because the doors and the floorboards and stuff are so squeaky that she would think that she would hear him. But she said clearly she was wrong. Um, but it's kind of strange for them to ask that question when he didn't, it's not like he went missing in the middle of the night or anything like that. He went, he left to go see friends and he never came back. Um, so the question of does, did he ever sneak out? Um, I would think that they saw that footage during that time as well. Donald McIntyre, who has been investigating the case for months and months, put together an independent team of experts. Andy Crocker, who's one of the experts on the team, is a former senior officer from the UK Serious Crime Squad. He says that this footage raises the possibility of third-party involvement. He says, quote, as a senior officer on the case, I would immediately have to consider coercion or grooming of the missing child. And today we are talking about potential involvement in drugs. Where did he go? Why? Who did he meet? I am shocked that this key information has been withheld for so long. Huge investigative opportunities have been missed here. A public appeal to preserve CCTV footage, ring footage, and witness testimony. Anyone who might have seen Noah out at 3.30 in the morning. We might have been able to ascertain the purpose of his journey if there was a coherent one. I have conducted numerous public appeals and I am perplexed that one was not conducted, especially when it appears the PS and I were aware of Noah's secret trip while they were still searching for him. McIntyre says, 
the PSNI have not given any coherent explanation as to why this material was denied to the family and apparently the coroner for more than two years. Noah is then seen returning to the flat at 4.05 soaking wet and this time without his headphones and flip-flops. The PSNI has given no indication to the family what other inquiries it has made about this mysterious journey. The family and the investigators strongly believe that the PSNI have not disclosed all of the CCTV footage capturing the entirety of Noah's movements that day. They've tried to take it to court, but they have lost so far. It is not without immense amounts of effort by Fiona and everyone around her. Um, Fiona does have a petition that she's asking for signatures because there's three pieces of information in Noah's case that she would like to be revealed to her and the police aren't giving it to her. So I am going to leave that in the description box below. If you feel inclined to sign that, please do because I think she deserves to know every single thing about her son's case. I mean, everything. I cannot even imagine as a mother myself um, thinking that the police are withholding information from me um, and chalking it up to, oh, he walked in there on his own. I'm sorry, but no. No, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't think I, it does not all add up. It doesn't, especially with the sneaking out at 3.30 in the morning. I think he was being groomed. I think it was probably someone who has made him think that he needed to help them in some way because he's missing everything all the time. He left at 3.30 in the morning. He comes back. He doesn't have his shoes. He doesn't have his headphones anymore. Where are they? Who took them? Who, do, who did he give them to? His book bag. Now, they say, oh, his book bag had his laptop and some school books in it. That's when they got it. That's when they got it back from the criminals that were trying to pawn his computer. Who's to say he didn't have more things in there that he was going to go give somebody? Um, I don't know. All I know is that I do not believe that that little boy left his house completely healthy and fine. fell off his bike, hitting his head so severe that made him get naked and ride miles away from his destination and walk into a storm drain. How would he know that it's open? Why would he pick that one? Um, and drown there. On his own. No. Mm -mm. And there needs to be more done. More needs to be done about this. Um, his story needs to be shared. He needs to be talked about. And if you know any more details about this case, please leave them in the comment section below so we can know everything. Um, just in case I didn't get it all. So feel free to share in the comments um and please let me know what you think of noah donahue's case i cannot imagine fiona i feel terrible for her it's awful and there is no justice for noah in this like i said i'll leave fiona's petition in the description box and if you feel like you need to give it your signature, please do so and share it so other people can sign.